Hello and welcome to another video in my series, Time in a Bottle. I wanted to go with something fun this time. Uh, sometimes those videos get a little heavy. Well, some of them have been and some of them have been a little more. But this is a little more lighthearted and a li little bit of a rant. Um, first, I'd like to apologize that my hands look, uh, in, in case you know you get the close-up of my hands when I'm showing you stuff, that uh, there's been no time for manicure yet. Uh, I haven't done my manicure yet this week. and. Uh, so, and how many times do I have to tell you I wash my hands a hundred, you know, a hundred, two hundred times a day? You don't need to hear that again. And you just did. See? Oh my God, people, so sorry. Okay, let's start. I used to love Avon. See, I used, uh, up until recently, it was I love Avon. No, I used to love Avon. I, um, I was an Avon rep from 1978. To 2018 I'm still registered but I don't do anything with it and um, of course the later years um, I stopped like I wasn't really actively looking for customers um, sometimes I'd approach my friends or whatever or co-workers uh, if they wanted to order something because I still had a, a short list of uh, clientele that were in their upper 90s once my last um, client um, passed away I stopped and it, it um, and now that I that, that I say that I understand the direction that Avon is going in is because those customers are transitioning passing away all right hmm. sorry I had to have some coffee Okay, so for me, so I, let me go back. So I was 10 years old and I wanted to, I wanted to be an Avon rep. You couldn't be an Avon rep at 10 years old. So my Zia signed up and I was the Avon rep. And even then, that was 1978. I felt like I had come in at the end of an era. You know what I mean? Like I felt already in 1978, that I, I, I had already missed what I consider to be uh, the golden age of Avon and it has a lot to do with my aesthetic and it has a lot to do it has everything to do with my aesthetic and has everything to do with um, culture the culture of the times for me the peak of Avon fragrances was the 60s and 70s especially when it comes to packaging and as you could tell by the title of my uh, video, it's Once Upon a Time When Avon Was Magic. There was a time during the 60s and 70s where Avon, Avon has always, um, was always known as reflecting or copying um, what was popular, what was, in, what was on trend, what was in fashion. So if you are a, if you're a perfume um, collector like myself, or if you are a uh, perfume aficionado, like I, or aficionado like I am, fanatic, whatever you want to call us, braghead, no matter. Um, some people like to use the term perfumista. That's uh, a little too highbrow for me. I'm not highbrow. This, none of this is highbrow. Okay, so I'm not highbrow. Anyway, the. Um, where was I going with that? Oh my God, people, so sorry. Okay, so Avon has always been, a, you know, like, had always been, like prior to recently, I'm going to talk about Avon that I know, the, the Avon of the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, uh, 2000s even. Um, has always been the direct, um, you know, the door to door kind of thing, direct sales, the direct sales company. Um, then it, it turned into multi, you know, it, it multi level marketing because it is, um, not that then it turned into, it was, yeah, then it turned into like that multi level marketing and it still is multi level marketing. Um, Although it tries to um, not draw attention to that, it is. And that's fine. Everybody, 
Everybody could do what they want. What they want. I don't give a shit. But I have to say that today I wanted the, the reason why this big preamble is that Avon has a, has always had the reputation that it was slightly behind on trends or it would kind of copy trends but not really enough. So you could kind of tell her that you were getting if something was in fashion. I'll give an example. In, in 1980, it was a huge fashion to wear these brooches with either comic book characters, parrots were big, um, and Avon ha had their version of it. So there was the one that you could get at the department store, and then Avon's version was just a little bit less cool. Okay? So just a little bit less cool. Avon's fragrances, which is really what I'm talking about today, were always, always dupes. And dupes are, is a, a term like, you know, duplicates. Uh, they were always facsimiles, copies, uh, similar to um, fragrances that were popular. And I mean like high-end fragrances that were popular. So their, their fragrances would always um, trigger uh, a similarity to um, whatever was in fashion at the time. So, for instance, uh, Ambush in the 50s and Avon had their version of fragrances that smelled similar to Ambush. Um, what's one? Uh, Jantu. Jantu in uh, the early 80s. Candid by Avon. Very similar. Very similar. Uh, practically a dupe. Sometimes they just blatantly blatantly copy a fragrance but unless you're in the know you don't know uh, you just know that oh this smells of the time um, there was one fragrance uh, at this current it's currently being sold it's called Prima Noir and Prima Noir is an exact dupe of Yves Saint Laurent um, the one in the hourglass bottle it's a vanilla fragrance sorry I didn't come prepared, but if you if you love if you love Yves Saint Laurent, that vanilla fragrance that comes in that hourglass bottle with the purple ribbon around around the middle, Prima Noir from Avon pretty much just flat out copied it. So all this, I'm st I'm talking. It's almost eight minutes, and I haven't even started what it is. So I just wanted to give you a little bit of background that you know. But in the 60s and 50s, 60s and 70s, Avon was a freaking powerhouse of fragrance, um, of perfume. Um, I can tell you this much, that the quality level was absolutely astounding considering how inexpensive it was. And so underrated because all my vintage Avon fragrances are intact. Like, you know what I mean? And I mean intact. There is nothing wrong with them. They don't have a musty top note. They're not missing their top notes. Um, they've, they've really survived um, well, and that is a testament to the ingredients that they were using. But not just Avon. In the 60s and 70s was probably the last, and a little bit of the 80s, was probably the last time that um, perfumery across the board was using quality ingredients. Can you tell that I love my Avon collection? I freaking love my Avon collection. And I'm going to share it with you as I dust it. Um, once, upon a t once upon a time when Avon was magic, when Avon was witchy. So I'll start with, I'll, I'll leave the really witchy stuff for last. I'll start with my favorite um, and I, I have, I don't know how many I have here. I probably have, it's under 20. I know I make it sound like it's a massive collection. But I'm very selective and they're hard to find, especially where I live. Um, many, you know, some I inherited from relatives. Um, a small number I scored on eBay uh, probably 20 years ago. And um, some are originally mine. And there's a couple that uh, uh, I scored in a thrift store and one in an antique store. I'll, I'll tell you, maybe I'll tell you the brief story if I remember the story of each item, but I'm not going to take too long. 
but it's going to be a nice walk down memory lane. And then there's some that, you know, people know that I love vintage Avon perfume. Uh, occasionally people have contacted me and said, hey, I have this Avon perfume. Is this one that you like? It's this decanter, blah, 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 blah. And exciting. So if you're out there and you happen to be watching this video and you see a bottle you gave me, thank you so much. You know how much I appreciate it. Um, and let's begin. So I'll start with a more recent one, recent in terms of age. This is um, a hippo decanter. This one I got empty. This was someone, th this actually is one that uh, someone contacted me that I know from, you know, through my website or, you know, through Italian folk magic uh, circles. And um, this one originally held Moonwind, but it was empty. I cleaned it out with, uh, with alcohol and then I filled it with Occur which I'm going to show you the original bottle of Occur um, because I had received a really beat up bottle but the fragrance is intact and I know too bad this is not smell-o-vision um, I love my vintage fragrances for me vintage fragrances are glamorous um, I feel perfume needs to be glamorous there's you know perfume is part of glamour magic uh, and if the perfume isn't uh, glamorous, I don't under I don't I don't understand the point of it. So this is my hippo. I love hippos. Um, I think I mentioned in a video a while ago. I can't even remember which video it was where people talk about their totems being panthers and all this stuff. I'm a Leo. I thought not totems, but you know spirit animals. And I don't want to be disrespectful to people's culture. I'm I'm just. Um, quoting other people and and you know keeping this language simple but please by all means do not think that I'm disrespectful to people's culture who um, totems and all that stuff is not my culture but I do have a, a relationship um, with the spirits of certain animals and and I'm just quoting people who um, who I, I just find it so funny everyone says that they're their animal spirit or whatever is uh, a panther, a lion. I'm a Leo, kind of expected um, lion. Um, I love lions. I revere, like I don't revere them, but I love lions. Uh, I'm I'm uh, just fascinated by them. But I feel a real kinship to hippos. And at first I thought, oh, it's because maybe because they're so cute, cute. I then did some research. These, these guys are freaking fierce. So yeah, I feel good about my relationship with hippos. But he's cute. Okay, this could, this is gonna go on forever. One of my original bottles is this guy, and I do have, and of course all the animals I'm gonna show you are animals that I have. Uh, that I love, that I have a spiritual connection to. And this is one of my original bottles. It's probably my only, or, yeah, this is the only one I have from my childhood that it was actually mine. And this is a turtle. And this one contains Sweet Honesty. And I have quite a bit of uh, Sweet Honesty. It was my first um, Fragrance Love by Avon. And it's still available today in the catalog, but it's, uh, you know, an ugly, in an ugly bottle because they don't care they don't care about us anyway so here's my little turtle love him and then years uh, some years ago I uh, scored this one I think ha this one's Hanagaza the fragrance and yeah this is a beautiful oriental Hanagaza this is like really glamorous but it's a brown turtle and again these old Avon fragrances, intact, intact. If anything, they get better with age. So my next animal that I absolutely adore, oh my God, when I, this one I scored on eBay. I, <laughs> I was like a child waiting for it to arrive in the mail. This too was many years ago. And this is a snail and I love snails and have a very strong connection to snails. And you see the variety of, uh, zoological friends zoological spirits um 
This guy's adorable. And this guy contains the pure perfume concentration of charisma, which I, in my opinion, is the most glamorous. Not the sexiest, but the most glamorous in my, like my personal taste of the Avon fragrances. For me, uh, charisma, I spritz on charisma when I go somewhere like, you know, especially in the summer and the dry heat where I live, nothing but compliments. People don't even know what, like, you know, it's like you tell them what it is and they look at you like, what? <laughs> I love it. But anyway, the next one, I think this too was an, was a, an eBay find. This one is uh, called Honey Bee, and it contains Moonwind. Moonwind. Moonwind is from 1970, and Moonwind is Avon's answer to fragrances like to Chypre, which, uh, but the Chypre of the 70s. Um, it's it's their answer to Rive Gauche by Yves Saint Laurent. Uh, it's always Yves Saint Laurent. I'm starting to detect a a trend. So, but it's softer. It's softer and a little more powdery. And look at this bottle. Oh my God. So very, you know, honeybee. My thing, people. Totally my friends. All right. So my my next, the next one I want to share with you, um, I'm going to group uh, a similar fragrance. Like I'm going to group the same fragrances together because I don't want to make it all, uh, let me see. What else? Oh. One of these is not a fragrance, it's a candle. And it, it's funny, it's because I have such um, an encyclopedic knowledge of Avon, of the, you know, the eras, the era that I love, like the eras that I love. Um, I could spot Avon from the door of the thrift shop. And this thing, I got it for $2. Oh, and all of these, like, Back in the day, I got them like really cheap, right? It's like now you go to eBay. Don't get me started. But anyway, so I haven't, I haven't acquired any new Avon for my collection, probably in 15 years. Except for this, uh, except for, except for two, this and the next one I'm going to show you. So this guy, oh my God, look at this beautiful milk glass, and it has Avon embossed on the bottom and it's a candle no fragrance probably didn't have a fragrance back in the day and I'm not going to burn it because you know I don't want to I love him I love turtles I don't know if you noticed you may not have noticed but I love turtles the next bottle uh, when I went um, when I went to Salem, Massachusetts in 2018, the summer of 20, July 2018, I, uh, of course, had to check out a thrift store or antique shop or something like that in uh, Salem. And I picked up three bottles of perfume. One was empty, but I got, a, I got it for the canister, which I'm going to uh, feature in a different uh, video. Um, another one was in a crystal bottle with a perfume. It's long, long, uh, discontinued French perfume. And I scored an Avon. And the Avon I scored is this guy. It's a white cat. And it contains Unforgettable. And Unforgettable, I want to say, is from the 1950s as a fragrance because it does smell very 1950s. Sweet, ambery. This is the one, I think it's Unforgettable that copies Dana's Ambush. And, um,. But this um, decanter may be from the early 70s. I'm not sure. Let me see if there's a date on it. Oh, my God. No, it, no there's no date on it. <laughs> Sorry about the funny face. Okay. So this is from Salem, from my trip to Salem. And um, I love it. So next... And you, so let me see, did I show you all the animals? No, I didn't show you all the animals. And then I'll go to the uh, more witchy. So the last two I wanted to share with you are these decanters. And oh my goodness, I love this German Shepherd. This German Shepherd decanter 
reminds me of our first dog, Ruby Tuesday. And Ruby Tuesday was something else. Those of you who've had dogs know that all dogs are wonderful, but some dogs, they're just freaking, they're just powerful souls. And our first dog was like that. She was um, something else. She was like, she was like people, she was dog, she was a queen. She was the adult in our relationship. So I love this decanter for, cause, because for me, it um, reminds me of Ruby, full name, Ruby Tuesday. Because we adopted her from the Humane Society and she would never say where she came from. All right. And the next, the next dog, because I love Basset Hounds, even though I've never owned a Basset Hound, is this little dude. And both of these are, no, this one has fragrance in it, and this I'm sure is Sweet Honesty. Yeah, this one has, it has Sweet Honesty. This one had, uh, this one was called Noble Prince, Wild Country Aftershave, and this one's empty. I got this one empty. This is one that someone gave me, because they had it sitting in their bathroom for like decades. And they were getting rid of it and they asked me if I wanted it and I was like, <laughs> of course. So I'm putting the call out. <laughs> when, once you see what I typically collect, if you have any and you're, if you have, if you have one and you're looking to let go of something and you think I might like it, send me an email. So it look cute. Look at him. Anyway. So now let's get to... So these are my animals, and they represent animals I feel a strong connection to. Um, I don't love everything that Avon put out. Don't get me wrong. I'm not like a I'm not a serious collector where I need to have a piece of everything. My collection, whether it be fragrance, cards, books, very curated. I have limited space. I also have limited space up here for like you know so that's why it has to be curated because otherwise it's it's occupying space up here and it makes me extremely uh, anxious all right let's get to the magic avon had a fragrance and i say had because it's been long discontinued called moonwind and moonwind i think is from 1970 and moonwind was their answer to um fragrances like calandre uh by paco Rabanne. Uh, fragrances like uh, it's very much in line to Kalesh by Hermes. Uh, it was their answer to, I think I already said it, Rive Gauche by Yves Saint Laurent. And this is the bottle that it came in. Look at this beautiful blue glass bottle. This, because it's so freaking old, I can tell you, is in fact blue glass. It's not glass painted to be blue, it's in fact blue glass. And mine is almost full. And what's so what's so witchy? Because once upon a time, Avon was witchy. Avon was magical. We have the goddess Diana. My, you know, like look at this, beautiful. So this is a rendition of the, you know, an artist's rendition of the goddess Diana, or Artemis, depending on um, which pantheon. You prefer so this is the fragrance bottle it still smells fresh this is beautifully clean doesn't have any um, you know it's not brown or brown darkened you know what I'm saying see what I mean about the longevity of these products I, I scored one of these empty jars. This was, uh, this contained Moonwind perfumed skin softener. So up and they just, they just discontinued, even just discontinued the perfume, uh, skin softeners. And for the last 20, 30 years, they were in these like ratty little bo plastic bottles. Actually the round bottle, the round jars were nicer. Then they were in these just freaking garbage looking plastic jars. This is what they used to come in perfume skin softener and this is my moonwind one I literally just bought the empty jar when I score you know I scored it on eBay this yes, this is blue glass and um, if you're a collector of blue glass this is quite a 
quite the specimen. And I took the, you know, the cardboard, because it's kind of gross. I took the cardboard, I fished the cardboard out, so there's a scratch where I did it with a fork. Because <laughs> everything's low tech here. But, and it sits on my, it's a, it collects trinkets, you know, ju my jewelry or whatever. Uh, perfume samples, you know, the little um, manufacturer samples. I used to keep them in here and then I used them up and, but. And lastly, from the Moonwind collection, also very witchy, a white owl. <gasps> Look at this, beautiful. The body is glass. The head is plastic and it contains the dusting powder, Moonwind, and the fragrance is still beautiful. So that's Moonwind, a white owl, which then, you know, white owl, Artemis, sorry, no, Athena is the white owl, Diana and Artemis um, on the bottle. Next. The next one I want to share with you is not, is empty, is empty. I used to, um, I think I had it when I was a kid or a cousin had it and I really wanted it. See, I'm dusting my stuff at the same time while I'm talking. And this is quite witchy. And it looks to me like someone tried to cut the glass unless it's just, you know, wear. But look, it's a pot belly cauldron lamp thingy I love this thing this used to hold bubble bath it doesn't have the label on the bottom anymore but I, I remember there being um, this was in the early 70s and my older cousins had this on their dresser and I used to sniff it and it's the um, the pink bubble bath that is still in production today until they get rid of that too because they don't care about us but anyway. what's it called soft pink so look at this beautiful so there's a there's a cut here in the glass and I wonder if someone was thinking of cutting it to repurpose it for something I don't know um, it would be really neat to cut it here and turn it into a glass cauldron because it's really nice glass it's a deep brown glass that looks that looks black unless un until the light enters it a little lampshade. Nine, early 1970s aesthetic. Can't get enough of it. Okay. Next. The next next one is a mythical creature. And it's a unicorn. And this unicorn, I don't even have to check, this unicorn holds field flowers as the as the cologne. And it's a very soft, very soft floral. Yeah, it's a very soft floral, very beautiful. Look at the condition of this thing. It's outstanding. Love it, love it, love it. The next one is just, um, I just love it. This was, um, this was my husband's grandmother's. Um, she was, uh, she was quite glamorous. And I keep it and it's, Look at this bottle. This is this is a Bakelite uh, cap. It's a little uh, it's a little cracked, but I, I keep it because it's it's just beautiful and it belonged to my husband's gr grandmother who I met and like I said, quite glamorous. She was glamorous till the very end into the into her 90s. And I just think this is a beautiful bottle. There's something about. There's something about the connection to the person it belonged to. There's something about the history of this. I don't know what fragrance it held. It smells like an oriental of the time, right? And this is a bottle many of you will be familiar with because before they changed it to a generic rectangular bottle, it still had the shape, but the glass was clear. This is the one from the 1970s. This is timeless. This fragrance is phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. Um, like I said, niche houses are starting to uh, copy these old scents uh, and putting them out like it's uh, a brand new idea. But this is incredible. 
um, this bottle is beautiful. I I don't use it. I use it very sparingly. I admit I use the um, the modern formulation, um, and then I'll put this. Uh, I'll put just one spritz of this just to keep it just to keep it because it's it's very smooth. Uh, it's very ambery. Good quality ingredients in this. All of them, all these old fragrances have excellent quality ingredients because they are lasting. And the last three are probably the witchiest. No, not probably. They are the witchiest ones of all. And in order of... So this, this bottle, occur. Okur is a fragrance, is a Chypre from the 19, from 19, late 1960s. This, um, it's hard to wear this. This is, um, this is dead sexy. Uh, where charisma is glamorous, this is overtly sexual. Uh, unisex. But then again, I feel like, for me, there's no gender to perfume. Um, so I'm probably not the person to say something's unisex because as far as I'm concerned everyone is free to wear what they want and I think it, it would smell beautiful on man, woman, extraterrestrial, extraterrestrial. So, oh, this occur, that's sexy, very carnal, very sexual, beautiful. The next one, I wish I had more from Avon of this time, of this era, mm -hmm. because there was so much in terms of, like this, the, the, you know, the, the witchiness and, you know, and all that. But there was also, in the 19, early 70s, a big zodiac astrology culture, late 60s, early 70s. And oh my God, I can't believe I have this. I scored this, I didn't even know it existed. I scored this on Avon on Avon. I scored this on eBay probably 20 years ago, the early days of eBay. And it came in the box and the and the label was set like the sticker was separate. And I popped the sticker on. Look at this beautiful vintage piece. It's a 4 ounce bottle. It's in brand new condition. And this one contains sweet honesty. But oh I know, like I sometimes I think, oh, it would have been perfect to get one of these, Leo with occur in it, because then it would be like perfection. But oh my God, I love this. This is the back. Look, there's nothing on it to detract from the beauty of this bottle. Now these bottles, I still see them now and again on eBay. They they came in every sign, the box. I don't think I kept the box. Usually, I have a bit of a problem. I keep all the boxes, and um, I, my collection looks twice the size that it is because the bottles are separated from the boxes, but then I store the boxes. So it's in, I, I'm going to have to do something about that because I don't understand why I hang on to boxes of things I'm never going to get rid of. But anyway, the box comes in. Um, the box. The bottle came in a box that had constellations. It was a black box of constellations and all this stuff. It was beautiful, but not as beautiful as the bottle. And last but not least, this was an incredible score because I didn't even know it existed. And I think this one was, was sent to me as a gift by um, someone who knew me through my website. Uh, this was before I wrote my book this black cat. Oh my goodness, look at this beautiful creature. Look at the detail. And it's in excellent condition. This one would be 1980, and I'll tell you why. It's because the fragrance is Pearls and Lace, and I remember Pearls and Lace being a fragrance that was um, released when I was an Avon rep. Soft floral. Soft floral of you know, the early 80s. I could be wrong about the timeline. And, and, and maybe it was uh, a fragrance of the of the early 70s, but I kind of, I remember it being around a lot still when I was a rep. So there it is. 
So that was, or that is my Avon um, collection of Once Upon a Time When Avon Was Magic. If you've watched this, if you've watched this video all the way through, thank you so much for indulging me. Um, they, this is one collection that gives me, you know, um, sparks a lot of joy. Um, brings me a lot of joy and it's a very close-knit family and it's always very exciting when I get to bring a new member home um, but also it's very exciting to have the, this little family that I have that I absolutely adore and these are things I do use these fragrances um, I do use them like they don't just sit on the they don't just sit on you know on my uh, dresser or shelves except for the ones that are empty of course um, doing nothing I do I do enjoy them I do enjoy them and yeah I wanted to share this with you so thank you again for tuning in if you um, if something resonates for you in this video like if you love Avon if you still love Avon, that's okay too. But I've broken up with them because um, they're no longer my Avon. Hashtag my Avon. And um, because even, even I used to be able to still get the vintage fragrance, like the fragrances they've had forever. But then once, you know, once the bottles change of the classics that they still offer, and they all turned into like they did what the department stores did with the big like they did what the big houses did with their um, back catalog, and put them all in rectangular bottles. And yeah, look, yeah, I'm talking to you, Estee Lauder. I'm talking to you, Givenchy. Lancome. Okay, I'll stop now. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I'm wishing you all a beautiful day.